Hello, my name's Jack, and today we're going to look at how to solve the machine vision puzzle. Sometimes we come across people who doubt vision systems, or people that have a fear that they might not work for their application. For the next 15 minutes, we're going to look at the machine vision issue and imagine it as a puzzle. As with all puzzles, with time, knowledge and dedication, they can be pieced together to solve. And that's how we'll end up with a successful vision system. Vision systems have been around for a long time. You can see here one of the first vision systems ever developed. This is looking back 50 years ago now. And as you can imagine, it was incredibly expensive, extremely large and terribly slow. If we think about all the incremental changes in technology that have happened since then, it's quite incredible, really. To think that the power and abilities in vision systems have increased so much to the extent of being able to do all of that within a smart camera, such as the one that you can see here, that could literally be held within my hands. We are at the point now which we can say there are millions of systems deployed all over the world. This is now proven technology that has evolved over 50 years at a rapid pace. If we use the rotten apple analogy here, yes, there are some bad apples within vision. However, just because a system fails every now and then, this does not mean that all vision systems are bad. And there are always reasons why those systems didn't quite make the grade. So, let's get into the real substance of this presentation and try to answer, why do vision systems fail? As mentioned, we're going to break this down into seven pieces of a puzzle. Not all of these pieces are technical, but they are all vital for a working system. Let's take a look at these one by one. The starting point here is software, and in particular, algorithms, which are the brains of any vision system. There are several of these algorithms that exist depending on what your application needs to do. It's important that the correct algorithm is used for the correct application. I'm going to run through three of the most commonly used ones in vision systems today. Pattern matching. Pattern matching can locate a part or an object in a field of view and verify whether it's there or not. It can help guide robots and it can detect if all pieces of a larger part are present. The images towards the left hand side, the T and the L shapes, could be picked and placed by a robot. And on the right hand side, we can see some semiconductors and we might want to know whether those pads are present or not. There are two traditional types of pattern matching, geometric and correlation, which is also known as normalized grayscale correlation. Geometric is the more advanced way of doing pattern matching, and it is an edge-based algorithm. So it will be looking for the edges of each object that has been defined. The advantages of this are that we can do part location when the parts are scaled, rotated, or displaced meaning a 50% increase or decrease in size will still be detected and rotated parts can be detected with minimal additional CPU usage as it's done intrinsically as part of the program. As it's looking for edges, changes in light can also be dealt with. Correlation is looking more simplistically at pixel value, so the pattern is detected by the matching of those pixel values. It's an extremely fast and efficient algorithm, but it's not so good with lighting changes as this could cause the part not to be detected. Rotated and translated matches will work, but others might not, meaning it's slightly less robust. But the general rule here is, if grayscale pattern matching works, then use it. This would mean you wouldn't have to pay for more expensive licenses or computational power. However, if your application has those restrictions, then you would have to move up to geometric. If you wanted to count pills in a foil packet, or washers perhaps, you could use an analysis algorithm to do so. There are two main types of this, one being edge analysis and the other blob analysis. Edge works on both color and grayscale images. You can get sub pixel accuracy as shown in the image on the bottom left with the line passing through the pixels and lighting changes will not affect the detection. Blob analysis is very basic and it's one of the first algorithms developed but it's still important today. It's fast, cost-effective, and proven. 
This works on binary data. So from the images you can see on the right hand side, you have the original grayscale, and then you would have to take a threshold to make it a binary image. This means taking a value such as 128 and setting everything below as a zero and everything above a one. This would then convert the whole image to a one or a zero, as you can see in the middle here. This means that uneven lighting will cause some issues. Both of these have a similar feature list, meaning you can find further mathematical properties, such as the contour, the elongation, or the center point. This exemplifies again that a simple, consistent setup will have a simple and efficient algorithm to help solve the issue. But as complexity arises, a more in-depth algorithm can be applied to work around this. Here, we are looking at character recognition and verification. Inkjet printing is often used on the side of food and beverage products, and an example of this can be seen on the screen. For the human eye, it's very easily read. However, for a machine, this isn't so easy. With the varying background, the gaps, the lighting changes, and a lot of other factors inhibiting its ability. Traditional character verification programs use a pre-processing step to join the dots to be able to read these characters, which you can see starting to happen in the middle line. As you can also see, this is starting to cause issues. The eight and the three are beginning to merge together, but the zero at the end is still not a continuous character, meaning it's unable to be read. To make that into a continuous character, you would need to continue with the merging process and you would end up with the bottom line. This is all merged together and equally unable to be verified or read by traditional methods. This is where you would need a more advanced algorithm yet again. An algorithm such as Shaw.OCR, which is Matrox's patented algorithm. This moves away from traditional merging of the dots and it analyzes each dot as an individual. It can deal with text being stretched, rotated, italicized. It can deal with different fonts and lighting variations. The point being made here is that for extreme complicated scenarios, specific advanced algorithms might be required to help deal with it. Complexity. It's important to remember that very often vision systems aren't used by vision experts. They're typically used by the general workforce within a company who don't have specific vision knowledge. Therefore, in order for a vision system to be utilized successfully, it has to be easy to understand and to use. In the case here of a very overwhelming GUI, this is often a common piece of feedback that is received. They must be easy to understand and the information that's being outputted must be easily recognizable. To provide an example of a clean, easy to understand interface, here we can see Matrox's Shaw.OCR again with clear indication items that have passed or failed with simple feedback. This example is also based around HTML5 so it's easily accessible from a web browser and very easy to follow. If we were to look at a more real life example, this is what we here at Clearview Imaging call Vision Box, and it shows the display that's generated for the operator. This is typically used by automotive part manufacturers. So as you can see in this example, we're looking at a radiator. You can see the master image being displayed at 0.5 with the inspected image below at 0.6. Point seven shows a clear indication of the pass or fail status of the inspected part, whilst the previous inspections are displayed below, all of which is initiated using the point 10 trigger button. What is shown here is there is no overload of boxes and information. The important parts are displayed so that the operator can have immediate and simple access to all that's required without confusion. Here is the display when a part fails. The fail indicator is clear at point 11. At point 12, where the inspected part image is displayed, a red box appears to outline where the part has failed. Flexibility. Another piece of feedback that the world of vision often receives is regarding the setup and then any ongoing changes or maintenance that needs to be applied to the system. Often, the original vision experts will have to be called out to adjust or update something that could very well just be a menial task. This is where consideration of how you build your vision systems comes in and what programs you use to build it also. This is where it's worth considering a program such as Matrox Design Assistant, which is a flowchart based machine vision software. Depending on your skill level and whether you have the time, you might want to build the vision system yourself 
or you could get a vision expert to do so. But once the system has been deployed, during a handover period, you can be taught how to make changes and edit the flowchart. This is because there is no coding involved here. It's blocks of a flowchart that make this vision system, which shouldn't be too intimidating. Setup. The setup must be done correctly and isn't something that can be rushed when creating a vision system. When the software side of things is completed, it's crucial to remember that vision systems often have contact with production areas. Therefore, all hardware, sensors, cameras, illumination, cables, everything has to be well-placed and well-connected so that the cameras can trigger properly from the correct positions to give the vision system the best chance of performing well. Additionally, within the setup of your vision system, it's important to verify the type of I.O. that it's using. With polling I.O., the state of the system is checked periodically. If we look at the image in the middle here, if the status of the image isn't checked at the correct time, the bottle could be too far down the conveyor belt and be missed by the cameras and in turn by the whole system. Real-time I.O. removes this possibility from happening. So as soon as it changes state, the vision system will act, ensuring the vision system can function as desired. Okay, so you've made it through the first four stages. You have your algorithms, it's all set up. It's understandable and it's manageable, but your system still might fail. Why? Sometimes within a manufacturing environment, the vision system has been pushed for by an engineering team, but not so much by the production team working on the floor. Resistance is often seen against vision systems as it's seen as a competitor for those jobs. A reluctance to work with a system can see those systems, you know, not utilized properly, switched off, or even potentially damaged. This is where as a company installing a vision system, it's important to get that buy-in sentiment, that the vision system is there to assist and it needs to be accepted from top to bottom within the company. Cost. Cost is always a key contributor. Fully installed vision systems could be from as low as 10,000 pounds, potentially less, but equally, they could be up to hundreds of thousands of pounds. It's important to analyze this beforehand and make sure things like return on investment are calculated prior. Looking at how much it costs you to produce the products, how much failures then cost you, so that open discussions can take place with the vision system company, so that your expectations are clear up front, ensuring that cost targets can be met and that this isn't an inhibitor to the project. Lastly, it's important to remember that not everyone has the knowledge to create these vision systems. Knowledge can of course be passed on and taught, with lots of courses available both online and in person these days, but it requires the time and dedication to gain. If this isn't something that you can dedicate your time to, then this is where we, as machine vision experts, can help. We have a team of experts, not only within our engineering team, but within our sales team as well, who are all qualified machine vision professionals. We have the capability to assist with vision software design, machine vision training, operator interface design, mechanical system design, commissioning, and technical support. Following this guide and piecing together this puzzle will be sure to leave you with a successful vision system. Thanks for listening to this presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comment section below or head over to our contact page on our website. Be sure to check out our range of machine vision demos on our YouTube channel too. Thank you.